Um, I would say good morning, but I know that we have international participants and I am in Austin, Texas. So instead, I'll say, all right, all right, all right. I am so happy to have everyone here today. So glad that you were able to join our second annual leader summit. And as Tyler said, we have an excellent slate of speakers for you today. Can't wait to uh, get to those individuals and let you all learn from them because they are amazing. Um, love them all. Well, I have some great news to share with you today. According to Gallup 2023 State of the Global Workplace Report, employee engagement is at an all-time high. Isn't that great news? Well, let's reframe that. When we dig a little deeper, we see that this all-time high equates to 23% of the global workforce being actively engaged. Yikes. From where I sit, that's nothing to celebrate. 77% of the global workers are either disengaged or actively disengaged. Or using terminology that's more current, they're either quiet quitting or they're loud quitting. Those aren't great numbers. When I hear these numbers, my mind goes to, what can we do about it? And the answer is honestly very simple. We can change the way that people and the work are managed. And we do so by creating the conditions necessary for more people to operate from a flow state, or in colloquial terms, in the zone. Flow is the state of being fully present in the moment and completely immersed in an activity to the point of effectively disappearing into it. For those of you who are able to experience flow at work, you're one of the lucky ones. Think about your own work day or a time when you actually really felt in the zone. There are things that you do that feel effortless and easy. You get lost in those tasks and you feel like you can stay there all day. Well, this is flow. But what you might not know is that accessing a flow state at work can be extraordinarily beneficial. Let's look at some of those benefits that were identified by, by Mihai Shishek Mahai in his groundbreaking book, Flow, The Psychology of Optimal Experience. The first benefit is happiness. Due to high levels of engagement in flow, people more often feel themselves satisfied with the work that they're doing. It creates a dopamine reaction that boosts your positive experience both during and after flow. The second benefit is less stress. Being in the state of flow is a positive cognitive response to stress, and it helps us feel a sense of purpose, a sense of hope, and a sense of fulfillment. The third benefit is greater motivation. As the activity brings about positive emotions and experiences, you're more motivated to take on new challenges. The fourth is greater creativity. Being in the flow state trains you to be more open to exploration, to play, to innovation. It also allows you to be more attuned to seeing patterns and it heightens your attention span. And last, but certainly not least, is greater productivity. Flow state correlates to peak performance. This allows people to be more productive while expending less energy. Just how much more productive can employees be who are able to work in flow more often? A 10 year study conducted by McKinsey found that flow made executives five times more productive. Just think about that for a minute. Being in flow helps us to get things done faster and more efficiently while stretching your skill set. When we're utterly engaged in work, it stops feeling like work, like something we've been tasked to do. We're immersed in the total joy of the task at hand. Wow, what a better way to spend the day. With benefits like this, why isn't everyone focusing on flow? Well, the short answer is they don't know how. How many of you watched the 2011 movie Moneyball? For those who didn't, it was a film that focused on the true story of the miraculous turnaround of the Oakland A's. Moneyball took a look at how Paul DePodesta devised a method to find and make, make use of undervalued players, undervalued players based on statistical variables that had largely been ignored earlier. Well, we share Paul DePodesta's vision for reframing how you view and unlock the potential of a team by making better use of your player's energy. We give you the statistical data, the energetic profiles of your people, which shows you who will be in the flow and when. 
but it's up to you to build your teams and align your players around those tasks that give them more energy. I posit that if we want higher levels of employee engagement and in turn, higher levels of productivity, we need to begin thinking about money ball for work. Today, you will hear example after example of how when employees' natural energetic preferences were not only understood, but they were celebrated, productivity and happiness went up. You'll also hear about when teams were given the tools to understand each other's energetic preferences, how they began to align seamlessly around the work and were able to create better outcomes and do so with higher levels of engagement and happiness. I'm enough of a realist to recognize that we can't work from our happy place all the time. There are times when we'll need to focus on work that draws on our lower energies. But what if we could work more in our preferred energies than not? What if it were okay to say, yes, I could do that for you, but based off of my energy, it might not be the highest value task that I could do today, and it will probably take me a little longer to complete than it would someone else. We need more leaders who understand this concept and are willing to not only reframe how they think about work, but change the face of work altogether. By learning how to access flow state and work smarter, not harder, that frees up more space to get work done in a customized way that fits each individual's needs. Whether it's a working mother who is juggling deliverables between feedings and diaper changes and nap time, or someone with a disability who's unable to commute to an office and work a standard eight to five day, or a caretaker of a sick or elderly family member, or someone with marital problems who just needs a little extra space and time to focus on themselves and their closest relationships, or whatever their circumstances might be. 5D, flow state, and a changing working landscape open the door to people being able to embrace their whole selves at all times and make work fit into their lives, not the other way around. That is why I'm thrilled to welcome to, to you to our 2023 Leader Summit. Thank you for your partnership, your attendance, and your willingness to embrace change. I'm overwhelmed by the amount of people that share in this vision and this journey with us towards making the world a better place one relationship at a time. It's time to reframe work, to create a system that works for both organizations and employees. For far too long, we've plotted along doing more of the same. That is until 2020 came along and with it, a need to completely re rethink work and do it quickly. However, organizations are still struggling with whether or not everyone should be in the office. Should employees be allowed to work from home or should we establish a hybrid model? If employees are not in the office, will they be fully invested in the work? We've heard the horror stories of software that monitors keystrokes or ridiculous amounts of meetings being required every day. Cameras on, please. Should we allow asynchronous work or should everyone be working at the same time? I can tell you from 24 years of direct experience with remote work, we do not need to be overly big brother, nor do we need to be overly communicative. Structure, balance, and understanding how people work best is the name of the game. I am uniquely qualified to speak on this topic because in 1999, 1999, I created my first company and my workforce was 100% remote. We didn't have tools like Zoom or Teams for our collaboration. But for those of you who remember the little blue Nokia 3310, well, mine sure did get a, a solid workout daily. I hired the right people and I trusted them to get the job done. My initial workforce was comprised of moms who had left the workforce because they needed to be there to raise their family. I hired them and I told them, I don't care if you choose to work from midnight to 8 a.m. as long as you meet deliverables on time, in budget, and with high quality. That company grew from zero to a million in less than a year. And two years later had grown to, grown to 10 million in annual revenue. Our customers would say, I don't know what kind of voodoo you're doing over there, but your team seems to make the impossible possible. 
But the voodoo, the magic, was simply in the fact that I had given them opportunity and that we had a workforce that cared about what they did and they had the flexibility to balance their lives with their work. So they were able to be in the flow more often. At Five Dynamics, we continue to operate this way today. So I know this model works. I didn't have the Simplify platform for my first company, but I sure do wish that I did. It just adds that extra layer of understanding the people which is even more important when you're working remotely. I know when Ed or Daniel need more time to be able to do some really deep work. I know when Tyler needs to have conversations and just talk through things. I know when Ashley needs, she's not you know, hitting keystrokes, instead she's being creative. She has to step away from the computer altogether to be able to come up with all of those wonderful ideas and great giveaways like she's done for the summit. And I know when I need to slow my roll. I know when I need to slow down. And the good news is that none of us take any of this personally. We understand that our working styles differ and we do our level best to be respectful of one another, of those differences, as we continue to focus on accomplishing more together. We were intentional about the theme of this year's summit, Reframe. Reframe is about mindfulness and moving forward with intention. Reframe is universal. Everyone can reframe and everyone can change the way that we work. I want to be known for reframing the way that people work with the goal of bringing more happiness, less stress, and higher levels of productivity to millions of workers around the globe simply by allowing them to lean into the concept of flow at work. What do you want to be known for? This year's speakers were chosen because they too believe in going against the status quo. They believe that good enough isn't good enough. They look at what is, but think about what could be. This year's panel of speakers comes from diverse backgrounds, education, healthcare, technology, engineering, and biotech. What drew me to this methodology 13 years ago was that it applies to everyone, everywhere. Dr. Andrew Morris Singer, a Harvard-trained physician, he looked at what was and what wasn't working in primary care, and then he reframed the conversation. He and Dr. Sarah Smithson will share with you how they're changing the face of primary care through their work at Intend Health Strategies. Kevin Bishop's life is a reframe from actor to LinkedIn executive. Kevin brings excitement and genuine curiosity to everything that he does. When Kevin stepped into his role at LinkedIn, he made it his own and he reframed how LinkedIn would bring Simplify into their next evolution of working with one another. Heather Courier Hunt and Susan O'Malley, they've reframed how we think about work during their tenure at IDEO and later in their new roles at Perkins and & Will and Genentech Roche, respectively. I've had the pleasure of meeting with Sarah, Susan, excuse me, and Heather multiple times over the last few months, and we worked together to fine tune our conversation for tomorrow. There was no sort shortage of explore in those meetings, I can assure you of that, but I think that you'll be very pleased with the end result. Diego Navarro, along with the creator of the Five Dynamics methodology, Mike Sturm, reframed how we thought about education. Diego will share with us his groundbreaking work that focuses on underprepared college students. Diego has changed the lives of so many just by making them heroes of their own stories and giving them best-in-class tools like Simplify to utilize not only in college, but also as they move into the workforce. And finally, Edie Weiner pushes us to reframe, well, everything. I first heard Edie about a decade ago, and she was just one of those speakers that stuck with me. And when this year's theme was announced, I knew that she had to be our keynote speaker. Edie Weiner is president and CEO of the Future Hunters, one of the world's leading futurist consulting firms. She served over 400 clients, identifying opportunities of, in areas like marketing, product development, investment, strategic planning, human resources, and public affairs. At 29, she became the youngest outside woman ever elected to a corporate board. 
That's incredible. Her many articles have appeared in publications like the Harvard Business Review, The Futurist, and The Wall Street Journal. She wrote four books, with her latest being Future Think. It was a global bestseller that's been translated into multiple languages. She's keynoted over 300 conferences, and we are thrilled to have her as our keynote speaker today. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Edie Weiner. <laughs> 